What's going on everybody? My name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on MPI implementation in Fortran. Now in this tutorial, we will be talking about the send and receive subroutines available in MPI. Because of the architecture of MPI, what happens is that whenever a program is run, it is run independently and on multiple, multiple processes. As multiple processes, okay? Now, these processes are independent of each other and as a consequence, one process cannot interfere with uh, working or, or the variables associated with other processor. And because of the independency, each process has its own uh, collection of variables, okay? And uh, and this leads to uh, leads us to a small issue. If at all, let's say process one has some data and that data is modified only by process zero and that process has to be I mean, that data has to be communicated to other processes there uh, there's not much way actually for uh, not much way because of the independent because of the independence of the program now uh, send and receive help in that regard what they do is they help you to send data from one process to another processes another process based on the requirement all right so here in this program what i want to do is uh, this is the objective we're going to take make a variable in one of the master process master process here refers to the process with the rank or the process id to be zero we make a change to the variable and then print it and then we send the copy to a slave process uh, with especially with the rank or a uh, process id equal to one yeah just a note for the readers a non-master process uh, is, is on is a process which has a PID or the process ID or the rank greater than zero and they are called as slave processes in the usual terminology nothing more than that here after sending the data to the slave process the slave process gets the receives the data prints it makes modification to the variable prints prints it again and then sends the data modify data to the master process master process then receives it and then prints it all right so this is what we're going to do today now in the this is this this is the general layout of the program okay uh, i just copied i just copied that hello world program and then remove that hello hello world line over here and other than that everything is simple so the uh, okay now here we'll actually start typing our code for for this program you need a you need a one more a few more additions first thing is this first thing is this uh, declaration over here we need to create a variable called a status one it can be status just like that doesn't matter which has to, which is an integer array of dimension mpi maximum uh, max uh, maximum i mean mpi status size what this does is that this variable status one stores the status condition for uh, the send and receive calls okay the status condition helps us to know more in detail about what actually happened during the send and receive calls if at all there is a problem status variable will have the information in it that can be used to understand what happened all right now after this this is specifically needed for receive calls and after this uh, i'll also tell you a way to that you know, which you can print your process name i mean your uh, let's say your processor name and that is by using this variable called as host name by default set this to be a character array of uh, this uh, size mpi max processor name is actually a variable available in MP mpi module so that is pretty long and afterwards you can return the get the actual size of the host name with the uh, name size all right now for t to send and receive the data we need some test data so i'm using this uh, these two variables as test data data 0 is for process 1 data 1 is for process sorry data 0 is for process 0 data 1 is for process 1 okay data one is for process one all right and after this this is all the housekeeping now we'll like get to the actual code here we type the main code first let's get the processor name so uh, okay before that one more correct one more thing let's get the processor name we can get the processor name by this command again i get processor name and we have to pass three arguments the host name the name size and error object error variable and after that we can uh, declare the name okay we can say hello i am host name one is to name size with rank and number of processes such as this this helps us because uh, 
this variable MPI max processor name is too long that uh, it, it, it's not be uh, there'll be a lot of uh, trailing spaces in it so this will just cut down all the trailing spaces and give us the actual size so that actual name without any trailing spaces so this is uh, recommended all right now let's actually go to the um, important task if you want to call in the master processor because we are just doing this in only the master process okay we need this you can use the end of condition we use the if if class to call specify the master process uh, the pro individual process and if you use rank equal to zero that we then this whatever things that we put inside this if class will be done only by rank one rank zero that is a master process likewise let me copy this let me copy this and paste this and if i change this to one this will in invoke invoke non master process of pid slash rank equals to one that's it here all the instructions in, in given inside will be done only by the process with the rank id with the rank one all right now now what we now let's actually follow the steps and we got all the requirements ready. Now actually follow the step first thing is to make changes to a variable so let's do it that's in process zero so let's assign a value and then actually print it that we'll do it over here there we go now we have assigned a value to data zero and then we print it and we mention here rank mod the rank zero modify data zero and our data zero is like data zero um, you don't even need this print statement, but since you're in the beginners beginning stages, it's worthwhile to cross verify everything we do. So it's, this is a good uh, way to understand what's happening. Now let's actually send the data to process one and print it afterwards. So, and for that, this these are the lines. So let me explain what's happening. So this is the MPI send subroutine that is required to send the data, and this uh, syntax for it uh, has lot of uh, lot of variables inside uh, let's actually look at the one by one first entry requires is the start address that is nothing but the variable that you want to send okay that's a variable name all right and then you specify the count as in the number of values or the number of data it holds chunks of data it holds so since data zero is just an integer it holds only one value so you just need require it to be one and then you have to specify the data type mpi enters the d data type for the integers for integers and integers are four bytes in uh, in MP, uh, sorry in MPI, so we need that. And then you specify the destination. If the destination process is uh, uh, destination process is rank or PID. Since we're sending it to process one, so we need we need to put the that as one. And next is the most important thing: tag. Tag is a unique identifier. Ta what tag does is that it's an integer uh, integer value. Uh, whose values range between 0 to 32,767 I guess 767 okay what it especially does is that it tags out the send and receive calls you see you can have multiple sends okay and if you want to know which receive uh, and you, if you want to uh, make sure that one a particular send gets up uh, is paired up with a particular receive you need this tag value the tag value is used for pairing up all right and now and then the we need the communicator and then the error value that's it and now we printed printed it up that part is done next what we do is we since we send up we send it to process one we'll have to go to process one and receive it and uh, for that the comment the subroutine required is called as mpi receive mpi recv short for receive and what it does is that it does it does the exact opposite of mpsn wherein it receives the data so as you as mentioned here it requires a start address on, on the start address which is the variable in which the data value has to be stored and you specify the number of values that you're going to receive and then the in, and then the data type and then the source uh, source P, uh, source process the uh, processes id so um, since it's receiving from process zero i put put this as zero and now i put the tag to be one why one because uh, this way uh, this receive uh, this send will come again only with this receive okay and this is the identification for it if this is let's say 2 let's say if this receive is 2 then this send will send the data and there won't be any receive command to take it because this receive will only receive data from uh, MPI send whose tag is 1 whose tag corresponds to 1 
so this way you in this way when you have the same tags you are actually pairing them up and for further pairing you use the communicator communicate same communicators and then you put the status variable so that you know what exactly happened okay in, in case if you run into an error this is for mostly for diagnostics and for some internal purposes and then you pass the IE error value error value all right now we done that and now we print the data over here that to show that we received it properly and now the next question is next thing is we print uh, received it and printed now let's actually make changes to the variable and print it and then afterwards send it to process zero which is which all happens over here um now to now this is what happens over, this is what happens now we set the data to be 100 all right and then we print the rank one modified data one all right okay and uh, modify data one the new value of data one equals data one okay this way we modified it and we know what we know we know the value <coughs> okay now after this we need to send the data and this will be the last thing to be done by process one <laughs> and there we go same procedure as above we send the data one to uh, say that there's only one unit to with the mpi mpi uh, in it mpi in integer value to uh, be sending it to process zero uh, with the tag two all right with a different tag number so that this ta this send is unique from the send above Commun uh, communicator the error value and now we send it right we need to receive it in the master tag so for that we need to go back we need to go back to this if clause of if statement over here and here we print the we print we take a receive it have a receive call to receive it and then print it so we call mpi receive data zero uh, we receive the data zero with one unit with an uh, integer value and we receive it from uh, process one with the tag two thereby since this tag is two and this tag is two whatever value this mpi send does this mpi receive will take it and then for further assurance assurance that these tags to be paired we send the same communicators and the and we get the we put the status variable so to, for details and error value and then we print it down print it here all right now we have the entire program ready all right now it's uh, time to run it so this is the pro this is the shell script we have written to run it is uh, exactly the same as the code we wrote last time only difference is um, the hello world program only difference is that is change the name to send receive other than that nothing mu nothing much different so it's recv recv and this one is uh, recv cool now let's run this you can actually run this in the terminal at the bottom of genie set the path okay now we just have to type um, send okay uh, we have to give permissions to chmod plus x send receive dot search now if i run send receive dot search let's see what happens there we go it says hello i am hp dv6 uh, hello i am hp dv6 of rank zero you know what i think i'll just open this in a separate window so that you get a better view there now okay that should do now if i do send receive dot search there we go it says hello i am hp dv6 with rank zero of four processes fine and you also get other messages from all the other four processes all right but you see after this only rank zero and rank one talk rank two and three uh, we don't we didn't specify any other instruction to rank two and three process with rank two and three so they are they remain idle in this program and you see this rank zero modified the data zero and data zero is 50 now rank zero send data to rank one now rank one receive data from rank zero the data has data one data one is 50 and now the rank one modify the data and it's now 100 and now we say rank one the send data to rank data set data one to rank zero and rank zero receive data from rank one as data zero data zero is 100 there we go now with this 
we have successfully sent and received the data back and forth between two processes. Now in the next tutorial, where we will be looking at a ping pong program wherein uh, we will send data back and forth between um, all the processes in the computer and we'll have a and it will be fun. And this after that you will get a good, better idea of about send and receive. Alright, that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.